What's up YouTube? Jessica here. Today I'm going to do a little overview on my Bubble Eye Goldfish. I'm going to show you their setup and I'm going to tell you what I feed them along with a few quick tips. Thanks for watching. So I got these two Bubble Eye Goldfish from my local chain pet store pet club. Um, sometime last year, late last year, I got them as a surprise for my son because he'd always wanted Bubble Eye Goldfish and they were never quite my type, but um, they were roughly $3 each at Pet Club one day and I kind of started to um, adore them. So I brought them home and I surprised him and then I learned how to take care of them, which surprisingly is no different than caring for fancy goldfish in general, in my experience thus far. I have treated them no different than uh, the other fancy goldfish that I have. In fact, they are mixed with raunchu and pearl scale goldfish. I think it's a common misconception that uh, these type of goldfish need to be in a species only setup. Uh, for me, that hasn't been necessary and I haven't found that to be true. So they are in a 40 gallon breeder right now in a grow out tank, which I'll show you later. And um, there was some of my fry from last spring uh, growing out. So I have been uh, power feeding them and growing them up for, um, for breeding season. So uh, one of the things I will mention that is that if you are using a hang on the back filter, you will want to use a pre-filter sponge to cover up the intake. Um, of that filter so that they do not get their um, eyes or any of their body or fins uh, sucked into that filter. So that's a precaution that you can take specific to bubble eye goldfish, but it certainly wouldn't hurt in general keeping fancy goldfish because they are quite clumsy and they can um, you know, hit their you know, various parts of their body on that intake, especially if it's a um, powerful hang on the back filter. Uh, the other thing is, with all my fancy goldfish tanks, I use a sponge filter, and sponge filters typically come with the little piece that goes on here, and then the airline tubing goes, you know, through this and into the sponge. I have removed this piece on all of my sponge filters, so they go in the tank like this, and the airline tubing goes right into it, and that way. Um, nobody is, again, bubble eyes, among other types of fancy goldfish, are not hitting, um, you know, on this, I wouldn't call it a sharp edge, but you just can never be too safe with, um, with goldfish. So uh, those are the only two real recommendations that I have. So besides those quick tips, I would never put um, something like driftwood or any type of rocks. Um, possibly um, flat river stones would be fine uh, with, with these type of goldfish. I do have them in just a bare bottom setup. They have a terracotta pot that I have uh, planted in there that's just starting to grow in. Um, but besides that, I just have the sponge filters and just that terracotta pot and no decor in there. So that is something that if you would like to do a nice aquascape and, and you want bubble eye goldfish, you'd have to be really um, particular with, uh, with how you're placing, with what types of materials you're using. So I wouldn't say you can't have an aquascape with a bubble eye goldfish, um, but you would want to be using things that wouldn't potentially uh, pinch their um, their eye where they wouldn't get stuck between rocks or um, scrape that on wood. They are definitely not, I've had aquascapes with fancy goldfish. They're not one that I would probably incorporate into an aquascaped goldfish tank, um, which you'll see I clearly do not. So um, for the you know other fancy goldfish uh, types, they would be better suited for a aquascaped um, planted goldfish tank. Some of the things that I feed my fancy goldfish, including these bubble eye, are uh, rapashi gel food. It comes in a powder mix, and um, you mix it with hot water, and it becomes a uh, gel-like, kind of jello-like um, consistency. So uh, I cut it up, cut it up into these cubes, um, or you know, I shouldn't take credit. My husband makes this for me, and he cuts it up into these little cubes for me, and I serve them. So that's a staple around here, the gel food. Um, I also feed many varieties of frozen food, including including this um, algae-based uh, marine formula. It's like a, you know, greens formula, and goldfish. Uh, they need their greens as well as their um, meaty foods. So I do give them this, along with um, brine shrimp and daphnium, uh, cyclops, krill, 
um, all that good stuff. I do feed them live California blackworms. I always have, and I've had no problems. Um, and then as far as dry goods go, um, I incorporate the um, cobalt shrimp and veggie mix. Um, it's kind of like a, 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 a sinking pellet and it would be something that you would feed a placo or something, but they sink to the bottom and, um, and they're a veggie base. So I give them that from time to time. And then I also do the um, bug bites uh, by Fluval uh, goldfish formula, and I have yet to try um, Cobalt's goldfish formula. So um, those are a few dry foods that um, I incorporate into the mix on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, along with the uh, gel food and frozen foods. Um, something else you can do is edamame or uh, peas steamed. Um, that's something fun and it'll take them a while to eat it and um, it's entertaining for, uh, for yourself and for the goldfish and something different for them. Um, so yeah, that sums up about what I feed them, just like any other fancy goldfish of mine. So I'll go ahead and get these guys back into their main tank and I will show you where they live.